to my very first podcast episode. My name is Judy, and the name of the podcast is The Autumn Acorn Knits, and I am super excited to be here. This is Meryl. Meryl is our little kitty. We love her very much. She would really rather get away right now, but I did want her to say hello. And um, she is a big, big part of our life. And you want to go, don't you, sweetheart? Yeah. She hears birds or something. So Anyway, I just want to start out by saying how difficult this podcasting thing is. Um, I watch a lot of podcasts, and I'm, I'm always thinking, I can do that. That doesn't look that hard. But it's hard. Trust me. It's really hard. The, I did a, an entire video yesterday and went to send it off to the editor today and only 45 seconds <laughs> of at least a 30 to 40 minute video uh, came out, was, was left. The rest is, is missing somewhere in space, I don't know where. So I wanted to cry, but I didn't. Instead I just said, okay, let's just do this again. Because if you don't do it now, you're never gonna do it because it's, it's a scary, nerve wracking thing to do these podcasts. So please bear with me. <laughs> As I as I try, um, so little story, little background story. Uh, where I'm filming right now is our um, cottage. It's our little guest cottage. It's next to the house, but it's um, you know you could see it from the house, but it's detached. And uh, I live here with with Joe, my sweetheart, and we've lived here for almost three years now. And when we first came to look at the house. Um, the realtor took us to all the outbuildings first, so we were able to see the cottage. And when I walked in, I, I'll never forget just how charming I thought it was and how enamored I was with it. And I just can't tell you how much I adore this little cottage. So I thought it was only fitting that I do my, my podcast from, from here. And um, I'm yarn bombing it, so with, with the help of some people, some friends, some strangers even that are sending me pieces. Um, slowly, it's taking a lot longer than I thought it would, but slowly yarn bombing the um, the front of the, the cottage. So at some point I hope to give you a little tour. Uh, at, you know, at the introduction you can see a little bit of the cottage, but I, at some point I'd love to give you just a tour of everything. Um, so yeah, Joe and I moved here about three years ago um, I was living in Vermont at the time. I'm this is New Hampshire. We're in New Hampshire, and uh, fell in love with this log house, um, basically out in the woods, in the middle of nowhere, in a, in a small town of uh, I believe there's around 850 people in our town, and we're at the foot of the White Mountain National Forest. So it's it's just gorgeous. I mean, <clears throat> this is heaven for me, and this is a dream come true. I'm definitely not a city girl, country girl at heart. Um, and this place just, just speaks to my soul like, like no other. So, um, winters are rough, uh, summers are gorgeous and, um, we just take it one day at a time, but it's amazing. So the pot, this podcast, I really want to be about knitting, crocheting, um, Coffee, because I am a huge coffee lover. Tea, because I've just just learned um, all about tea and, and I'm really attached already. Um, living in the in the forests of the woods of New Hampshire. Uh, and about my, my kitty Meryl, who you met earlier, who's hiding under the bed now. And then about, uh, I want this to be about using essential oils to find balance in your life. Um, I'm diffusing, right now I'm diffusing some cedar wood. And because I was nervous, this is this is really nerve-wracking. So I was like, ah, I need something to kind of ground me and and calm me. And for me, all of the the tree oils do that. Spruce, pine, cedar. I just they're they're all very calming, calming for me. So that's what I'm diffusing, and um, I'm drinking. Well, I'm drinking some. This is pumpkin spice tea. This is the second time I've had this. Oh, I, 
can taste the cinnamon, and the clove, and the pumpkin, and the uh, cardamom, I think. And oh, it's so yummy, so yummy. Mm. Anyway, so that's that's pretty much what I want this podcast to be about. Um, I have a wonderful family. I have three grown children. My youngest named Sarah lives in Maui, Hawaii, so poor thing, right? We all feel so sorry for her. She's a teacher there. And um, my middle daughter, Kelly, is a nurse living down in Connecticut. And she is expecting a baby any day now, little girl. We can't wait, first, first grandbaby. And um, so excited to be a Nana. So yeah, any day, we're waiting for that call. And then my son Casey is a computer expert, genius. He's living down in South Carolina. So I have three great kids uh, and a great son-in-law, Ken, Kelly's husband, Ken. And um, so yeah, can't, couldn't be happier. Life is good, life is good. So let's start um, by talking about some of my works in progress. And I have quite a few works in progress. I seem to be a serial knitter. So I've been really wanting to learn how to knit socks. And I figured I'd just teach myself. So a couple weeks ago, I found a pattern on Ravelry, a free pattern. And I took out my needles and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to knit socks if it kills me. And so I bought some Patton's Croix yarn, beautiful striped yarn, um, followed the pattern exactly, and I believe it called for a size, a U.S. size 2 double pointed knitting needles. And um, it began with a cast on of, I want to say 84, 82, 84. I had no idea. I just followed the pattern and uh, spent pretty much all day working on this sock because I I was determined to figure it out and I had a little bit of a problem turning the heel but all in all I thought I did well. Got my sock, picked it up, brought it downstairs uh, to Joe and I said, Joe, I made a sock. And he goes, honey, it's, it's huge. So yeah, here it is. It's giant. I, I don't know if you can tell how big it is, but it's it's enormous. It's like a Christmas stocking size. So he tried it on and it was really big even on his giant feet. So we laughed and um, I woke up the next morning determined and like, okay, I can do this. I'm just going to find a new pattern. I, I actually asked some, some friends on uh, Instagram, you know, what what should I do? What's what's what should I have cast on? What size needles should I have used? So everyone recommended casting on around 60 to 64 with a size US one knitting needle. So that's what I did, and lo and behold, I ended up with a sock that actually I think will fit Joe. These are going to be Christmas presents, and they're not blocked. I don't even own sock blockers since I'm such a new sock knitter. But uh, yeah, I'm really proud because I was determined to figure this out. Now I believe my tension, it, it, the gauge looks so different. The material looks a little you know, wider up here than it should be and down here it looks just right. So we'll see how they fit. Um, I have the second one I'm at the you know the end of the second one. I've already done my slip stitch heel and turn the heel, and I'm just now knitting uh, the foot. So I'm using a little little stitch marker that I don't know if you can see that. It's very hard to show you, but it's a beautiful little bead, and I have a lot of these from someone very special to me gave these to me quite a few years ago so and anyway so hopefully I can be I can give Joe a pair of socks either for his birthday which is coming up in September uh, later this month it is September um, or for Christmas so we will see what I decide on that but these are being housed in my little mushroom bag 
my project bag. I ordered this on Etsy. Oh, I love it. I really love it. And on it I have because I am literally obsessed with acorns. So I have it on a little a little acorn stitch marker progress keeper that I adore. Yeah, I'm nuts. Nuts for acorns. Cannot get enough of them. Um and this bag is from Rose Fiber Arts on Etsy. Uh, it's just so, such good quality. It's just the interfacing uh, is just nice and thick and the material itself is just gorgeous. It's got the pleated bottom so that it sits up and it's just to me the perfect size um, for socks. So yeah, love that. Love that one. Then I decided that I was going to try a pair of socks, another pair of socks, but this time for me following that same pattern and this time I used some some Regia design line um, by Arnie and Carlos. So oh, if you hear something that's just Meryl, she's climbing trying to get to the window so she can look out. Um, so yeah, this is the the ball band. You can see that. And I really, really love this color. This was the little mini that I made after some of the leftover because this was a hundred gram uh, ball. Anyway, so oh, backstory: Arnie and Carlos. Don't they look like the nicest guys? They have the most gorgeous Instagram feed. Amazing the the Fair Isle knitting that they do and the the knitted toys and the, just such talent. So, my nephew Christopher and his beautiful wife Emily. We're in Mexico, and they actually met and hung out with Arnie and Carlos, which I thought was so cool. And Christopher lives in Vermont, and Emily, and Emily live in Vermont, and Arnie and Carlos were visiting, because I believe they live in Norway, Sweden, Finland, somewhere out there, and they were visiting the United States, so they went to visit Christopher and Emily. And um, they had a really good time. My sister Valerie also got to meet them, and they actually came to her house, I think, for brunch, and brought her like an autographed copy of one of their books that they had released at the time. It's just so exciting. So I really hope to get the chance to meet Arnie and Carlos someday. So anyway, this was my finished sock. Isn't that beautiful? I'm really, really proud. I have two. I finished two. Um, they're not perfect. They, one is a little bit, I believe one's a little bit longer. Um, you can kind of tell at the toe. One, one extends another inch or so longer. And they don't, they don't match. Um, you could see the tops, the cuff, just no ended differently and I still love them so so much because they were my first really successful pair of socks but I really am a matchy person so I wanted them to match and I thought I did what what I was told to do which was to start uh, your first sock from one end of the yarn and your second sock from, from the other end of the yarn but no they still don't match so anyway I still love them, still very, very happy with them, and so excited that I have the sock bug, because I totally have, have the sock bug. So anyway, these socks are being housed in this oh, amazing bag of retro campers. It says, life is a journey, happy camper. So cute. So, so, so cute. And this is a little drawstring bag. I love it. And then, of course, I decided I needed this. Boy, is it hard to show. This little, help if I held it up, camper, progress keeper. Can you see that? Ah, I love it. So excited. So excited when I found that. And this little bag is so beautiful as well. Beautifully made um, by Twisted Yarn and fiber on Etsy so I highly recommend that shop and oh, 
I would definitely say because of the fabric, the material of this, this is my favorite. Although the mushroom, uh, I don't know. There's a couple coming up too that I also love so so much. So, um, let me put that little. She sent me some tea, which was really nice, and um, honey bush, mandarin, and orange. I have no idea what honey bush tastes like, but I can't wait to try this one. I'm really excited about that. So. Um, the next little thing that I made, I think I called these works in progress, and they're kind of works in progress and finished projects all mixed together, so excuse me for that. Um, just that a little bit. Uh, so yeah, these I also pull out the band, used Regia pair perfect because I really wanted two socks that matched and again this is the Arnie and Carlos line and I cast on the right number of stitches this time I used the US1 knitting needles and I came out with these don't you love that design I just do but, and I mean, I have two. They do match as far as size, so I did, I improved on that area. But color-wise, they do not match at all. Look at that. I mean, that is so different. Look at this bottom. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, I don't, I it was so, so careful this time. I definitely, definitely started the first one with the little yellow strand of yarn that it tells you to. And then um, the second one, I used the other end of the yarn because I thought that's what you were supposed to do, but I'm not really sure. So anyway, I love them. I'm happy that I have them. And um, I'm just going to keep trying until I can get two socks that match. But I ended up with this little mini after and I made out of it. It's so pretty. You can't see all the colors, but I'm new to this mini thing. I don't have any. Well, I have a few now, now that I've um, started making socks. I have a few. Also in my bag is this amazing body butter. I don't know if you could see it, but Young Living makes this. It's called, it's coconut lime. Uh, replenishing body butter and oh it comes in this giant tub I mean it's really big and then I don't know if you could tell how thick that is but oh mm, it just smells like a fresh picked lime and it's super super healthy no um there's nothing in there that is toxic at all it's all you know really 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 safe no chemicals natural ingredients and, and um, coconut oil, which, ah, it just feels so good going on. I just bought Joe one too because we're really, we're really working on trying to clean up our house, get rid of all the, all the chemicals and all the junk in our everyday products that we use. So he was putting on this, I think it's called Aquaphor. And so we looked up to see how toxic it is. There's an app, a free app you can get called Think Dirty. And you can scan your products and see how, um, you know, how dangerous they are for you. And that one did not score well. So we, we tried this when we were at the convention in June and we both fell in love with it. And it was out of stock for a bit. So once it came back, we're like, ah, we're getting two. So, and this is in my sweet little love more bag which I thought would be really cute for for Valentine's Day and there's a little um look at him can you see a little hedgehog on there he's adorable I just love these little progress keepers so so sweet 
so those are finished and then because I have now I have the sock bug I decided to um, knit another pair so this time I found online I believe I also found this one on Etsy <clears throat> and I just thought it looked amazing but it's a uh, Chappelle crazy zauber ball I hope I'm saying that right Zauber ball something um, 100 grams 420 meters again a, a thing a fingering sock yarn fingering weight yarn and I just oh it doesn't look like it did but so many colors in there oh my goodness I was I, I it's so exciting to knit from this because you just don't know what what colors coming up next it's amazing so I have one finished look at that look at those colors it's amazing oh I love this so much it's like an orangey that's oh, got a piece of paper on it it's like an orange color but oh I just love it it's so rainbowy and beautiful and it just feels mm, it feels like the nicest sock yarn that that I've used so, used so far so I'm really happy with it and the second one, which I am storing in my little needle cozy, double pointed needle needle cozy, which is by um, another Etsy seller, uh, done by hand studio. Love love these. I love hers in particular because they do have three snaps, so that you've got your needles in here and then. You can snap that up for a small project, or you could open that snap and have a larger project in between the two, the two end snaps. So so handy. And I used to be so tired of losing my needles all the time. So I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> if you're a woman over 50, you can relate to this. But um, yeah, I always tell people that my thermometer gauge is totally broken so yeah a little sweaty sorry about that it, it'll happen 20 times a day sometimes I usually put peppermint on the back of my neck and that really helps cool me down but oh uh, I'm so so ready for this phase of my life to be over move on to the next so yeah anyway this sock is not going to match either. Well, nope. It's just not happening. I'm not intended to have matchy socks. So I still love them and I will continue on. But uh, if anyone has any secrets or knows what I'm doing wrong, honestly, I would, I would just be so happy to learn. And thank you. If you know, just let me know. Put a little message or reach out to me. Um, yeah. Anyway, that. These are so much fun. So much fun to make. And I, oh, I have some hard lotion here by Queen Bee Apothecary. Another lovely shop on Etsy. This one's called Lime Sugar. I think I have a lime. I have a lime obsession too. But um, yeah, it's nice. It's hard. Nice hard lotion. So, smells good. Beautiful. So that's that. And this bag, oh my goodness. This bag is so sweet. Um, not sure I'll remember. Oh no, I do. Done by Hand Studio. Made this little one. Little alpacas. They're cute. Love this and I love this one. It's, it's got one little drawstring and then she puts a bead at the end, which I think is so sweet. And the inside, look at the inside. These little polka dots. Lovely. Really happy with that one. And yeah, so that's flannel. So, so soft. Um, next is just a little, a little notions case. I think this is going to be a gift. Let me move this. 
I think this is going to be a Christmas gift, but I love this little pine cone progress keeper. How sweet. Love it so much. Beautiful, right? And this was also from Rose Fiber Arts on Etsy. And she gave me a little little Irish breakfast tea. So that will be delicious too. I'm just having so, so much fun trying all the different flavors of tea. I had no idea. I knew about black tea, green tea, uh, chamomile, but I had no idea. When I go to the store, I'm overwhelmed with choices. I'm the type of person who really only wants two or three choices. If you give me an entire wall, oh, I'll be there all day trying to choose. It's really hard. It's really hard. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is, is really mainly this bag. This project bag. Mm, look at that gold sparkle. Do you see that? It has so much gold sparkle all over it. Just love it, love it, love it, love it. And let's see, this little project bag is from Sunshine and Bubblegum. Also another Etsy seller. I love Etsy. I have been either selling or, or buying on Etsy for, what, since 2007, I believe? It's a long time. At least 10 years. Um, and I just can't tell you. I, I mean, I've, I've bought the most beautiful things. But I had a work in progress in this little bag, and um, I tore it out. I ripped it back, but I was making these lace leaf leg warmers. Kind of simple, nice pattern. And I was using this yarn that needs to be caked up. Um, and I got this, I have, I have two of these balls, from the Green Mountain Spinnery in a little town called Putney, Vermont. A really wonderful little um, yarn shop. This is a Simply Fine fingering weight, 40% kid mohair, 60% fine wool, 450 yards. Um, it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. It is filled with just blues and greens. It just reminds me of the the earth. It's so, so pretty. Um, but I, I tore it back because I just, it was too loose. It wasn't, the, the fabric wasn't coming out the way I wanted it to. So I will either do those again, just start over again, or think of a new project. I've had this yarn for a long time, but it's so special to me that I just wanted to go to a project that I'm, you know, I'm really happy with. So we'll see. I don't know yet, but I do like those little leg warmers. So uh, maybe, maybe it's quite a bit of yarn. Um, this pattern, uh, calls for, well, it says knit picks capretta fingering weight two balls. So I really have no idea what, how much yardage, um, that is. So this pattern, by the way, is by Emily Leak of Autumn Hill Llamas and, and Fiber. It's a free pattern. You can get on Ravelry. So my last project bag might be my favorite, but it's really hard. There's three that I just can't choose from, but here it is. It is the cutest thing ever. It has a little bunny, a little beehive, a little house, trees. I just love it. And then the back are some little birds in a little bird bath and beautiful flowers just everywhere and apple tree, pear tree, a weeping willow tree. Oh, I just love it. It has a little handle. A little green zipper, and then on the inside is this pretty kind of lavender green matching fabric. And this is by another Etsy seller called Hooked by Happenstance, which is a really cute name. Here is, here's her card. 
hooked by happenstance. So wonderful, wonderful bag. I don't have a project in it yet. I'm waiting for something special uh, or maybe an Easter bunny. I'm not sure. I can't decide yet. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and here's another one of those awesome needle cozies. Boy, this one's beautiful. It's got those vintage scissors and then buttons and a little safety pin. And again, it has the three snaps because that's what I look for when I buy one. This is by the same seller as the pink one. It's called, uh, she's called The Steady Hand on Etsy. I highly, highly recommend this shop. And she just got these cute little, little tags. I just love those. Little yarn ball with scissors and like legs, tail. I don't know. I think it's so cute. So yeah, that was new. And then this sweet little bunny, which I think belongs on that bag I just showed you. Isn't that so adorable? Oh, love it. Um, G H no, G M H N knits on Etsy sells these. I think I got the pine cone and the little camper as well from from her. I just love her progress keepers. And if you've never used a progress keeper before, they're really just for keeping track of your work. So when you in the morning if I were to start knitting on a pair of socks, I could you know, attach the little progress keeper. And then when I'm finished at the end of the day or whenever an hour later, I could see how much progress I made. Of course, you can also use them just to mark areas. I use them with in my, with my sock making as well, just to kind of clip on. I mean, this one's a little heavier. You wouldn't necessarily want such a heavy one. The pine cone's pretty light, so that would work really well too for just marking where you where you need to mark when you are um, turning the heel and, and all of that other part of making socks. So those were all my goodies. I did pick up some yarn. Um, and when I do the next podcast, I, I hope to be able to podcast every once, one week or, or at least every two weeks. Um, with the baby coming soon, I'm thinking that it'll probably be a, there'll be a two week gap, but if the baby holds off, I can probably fit another podcast in before she arrives. But I'll be going down to Connecticut to stay with Ken and Kelly just to help out for a week, maybe a week and a half, um, until they kick me out because it's going it's to be really difficult to leave. But anyway, so I do have a lot of yarn to show you that I've, that I've picked up. Um, we went to Portland, Maine the other day and uh, found a wonderful yarn shop there. So, But for now, I did get, I did pick up some yarn on Etsy again. Oh, look at it. Knit Coast Fibers. And it is so amazing. With the pinks, all the different shades of pink, almost leading into like a reddish or a fuchsia. And then just the gray, the lighter gray with the darker speckles and oh, it's so gorgeous. So I did get two, I got two of these. Um, let's see if I can read to you what, there, I'm just going to move that. That's a little bright for me. It seems to be a little bright. Anyway. Let's see, this is hand dyed in California. It's called To the North is the colorway and the base is called Bunny Sock. 100% superwash merino wool, 400 yards, 100 grams, two ply. It's a fingering weight. I love it, love it so much. What is this? For best results, gently hand wash in cold water and lay flat to dry. Yeah, so pretty. I do not know yet um, what I'm making, but do you have any ideas what I could make with two, 
two hanks of this, I would really appreciate it. Just let me know. Anyway, she sent along this gorgeous mini. Oh, when I saw this, I'm like, I need to start collecting some minis. These are way too fun. I'm assuming these are also on her her bunny sock base because, oh, so, so, so soft. Unbelievably soft. Maybe not. It, it's, it seems a little different. You know, I don't... I don't claim to be an expert. Um, I've been knitting since I was probably 10, but it isn't, it, it wasn't until really lately that I started to truly appreciate fine yarns and wool and hand dyed and, you know, all the fun accessories and tools that you can use. I also recently discovered fingering weight yarn, which I was always a chunky, bulky, extra bulky kind of girl. And I'm really, I'm changing, which is fun. I think it's kind of fun. It's like you know, the second half of my life can be new, um, a new appreciation, I'd say, for, for this art. And figuring out that there are other ways, there's other materials that I can use to just, and be so, so happy with. So it's fun, super, super fun. So that is all of my, um, you know, purchases, all of my works in progress, a couple of finished projects. So I wanted to share something with you and then we'll have a giveaway and I'll, and I'll let you go. I don't want this to go on for too long. But on Facebook, I have a friend who sees my knitting and she saw that I was starting to knit socks. And she had a friend, has a friend, that she knew that her mom had passed away, I think last year, but I'm not sure. And she was a knitter and she had started a pair of socks and then she passed and never finished that second sock so she knew that this friend was desperately looking for someone who could finish you know her mom's sock for her so i said absolutely i'd love to i'd love to so it came today actually the the little handwritten pattern that her mom must have written and um, a note. And I'll read you the note. It's so sweet. It says thank you. Dear Judy, thank you for taking on this project of loving completion. The sock mom started may need to be started from scratch as I think it may have dropped a stitch or two obviously it's your call good luck and joy channel your inner Betty my mom and thank you thank you so I thought that was so sweet I'm just I'm honored honestly I'm honored to do this I only hope I can do it justice but here is the finished sock from mom, from Betty, um, and the other sock. She was right, it's definitely <laughs> lost some stitches. I would say, yeah, almost all of them. This is why those needle cozies are so handy, but so I'll start this over. And Betty was making this in Deborah Norville's Serenity Garden yarn. Which is a really pretty sock yarn. Um, I don't think that it's wool. Pretty sure it's not. But I could be wrong. It's actually a two. The weight is a two. Colors, gems. Um, 185 yards. It's actually 100% Draylon microfiber. So it's a really soft, very soft yarn. Very pretty. So yeah, I will be um, finishing that up and sending that off as, as soon as I can. And I'm just so happy that she'll be able to wear her mom's socks after all. So I think that's really, really fun. 
And like I said, I'm honored, honored to be able to do that for her. And she lives in the same town as my daughter in Connecticut, so that's pretty cool. Maybe I can hand deliver that. So finally, I wanted to do a little giveaway in honor of my very first podcast. And um, I had picked up this yarn. This is a hand, it's a hand spun yarn by Heartstrings by D on Etsy. Again, there's a theme here. Um, I don't want to pick it up until, <laughs> until the end because it's so crumply and what's the word? It's, yeah, that. But anyway... If you would like a chance to win, I do have to show you though, so oh please forgive me for the noise. It's a very beautiful, oh such pretty autumnal colors. Yeah, I love it. And then I threw in, because I'm, like I said, I'm so passionate about acorns, I threw in some felted acorns that I made. I think there are four of them in there. And then some handmade buttons as well. Uh, they're yellow, four yellow buttons that I made as well. So, oh, and on the back there's a little postcard that you can color in. So, I would love to send this to you, someone. Um, so, all you have to do to enter to win is just make a comment um, below this YouTube video, or if you're uh, watching um, on Facebook, we have a group uh, called the Autumn Acorn Knits. So if you just go search for that group and um, request to join, I, I will happily welcome you to our little community. And then just make a note there. I'll have a little podcast uh, thread. And just uh, let me know what is your favorite thing to knit. I mean, as you know, lately mine is socks. But um, what's yours? I'd be curious to know. That's so weird. That just moved by itself, so, yeah. Kind of creepy. <laughs> anyway, Meryl's over there sound asleep on the bed. She looks so, so sweet. So, thank you for joining me for my very first podcast. Um, I do plan to improve the quality. I'm looking into uh, better sound, especially. That would be really nice to have, you know, a higher quality sound. But um, I especially wanted to thank Joyce. She uh, has an Instagram page called Ruby Moss Cottage, and she started a podcast. I'm not sure if it's been a year yet or, or not, but uh, she's been very encouraging. I love her podcast. I just relate to it on every level. I love hearing about her, her cottage and her gardens and her grandies, her little sweet grandchildren. And I just... Like I said, I can really relate to, to Joyce and what she stands for. I love her knitting. Her projects are gorgeous. She's so talented. So I just wanted to say thank you, Joyce, for encouraging me, for supporting me. Uh, at one point, you know, you said, just go for it. Just do it. Just do it. So thank you. I truly, truly appreciate it. And also, I just wanted to say thank you to Sonia Lloyd. Uh, another uh, friend on Instagram who has also been super supportive of this podcast. So thank you, ladies. It means, means the world to me. It truly does. I have no idea if I'm going to end up with, you know, just three viewers um, or more. But in any event, I'm excited about this journey. I hope that you enjoyed my first episode. And I would love it if you would reach out and say hi. Introduce yourself. I'd really enjoy that. Thank you. I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye.